Our scripture this morning is from Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. It's entitled, A Prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family, in heaven and on earth, de derives its name. I pray that all, out of this glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through the Spirit in your inner beings, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long the and deep is the love of Christ, and to know his love that sur surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand. As a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to worship today, as we come to hear your message revealed, we ask that you find in us worthy, loving, and kind hearts. All these things we pray in thy name. Amen. On this All Saints Day, we remember an awful lot of people here in this congregation and throughout the world. And my dad, who was a Disciples of Christ pastor, he was the second in his family. Grandpa Patton was also a pastor, died in August, and we had his memorial service in September in Indianapolis at a wonderful church called Tapestry Disciples of Christ Church um, just south of Indy. Now, I have to tell you, my dad and I did not always get along, okay? Um, he was indeed a pastor, but he didn't know how to handle girl children. And I think it's kind of funny because my brother, David, has three girl children. My brother Chuck has one girl child, who by the way is, not that I'm a proud aunt or anything, is touring with Disney right now, Disney on Ice, and I'm so excited to go see her a little bit later on in Newark. But, you know, my brother seemed to be able to handle this, my dad did not. In fact, one example was that um, when dad went to get a new pulpit robe, it was bright yellow. Who does that? My idea of a pulpit robe was long and black or white. And so we kind of clashed a little bit there. We clashed our entire life. If I wanted to get, um, say, a D-men, dad had to go get his D-men. If I was invited to preach at the national office for the Disciples of Christ, dad had to make sure that he was invited too. It was like that all of our lives. And so, it was difficult to say the least, but one of the things my dad taught me, which I will take to my grave, is a sense of being kind to others, to looking beyond what color is of a person's skin. In fact, when we were kids in Marion, Illinois, there were two distinct towns. Marion. Illinois tried to secede from the Union, okay? They were far enough south where they decided that they didn't want anything with the northern end of Illinois and tried to secede from the south. In fact, the Ku Klux Klan famously came into that church silently, laid their gifts on the altar, and left. It was a sign for the people in that church to behave. Well, my dad didn't know how to behave. 
He did not know how to behave. And when an African-American family moved to Marion, the town that we lived in, from Indianapolis, they were used to going to church wherever they wanted to go to church. And so they chose not to go to the black side of town. And I'm not going to tell you what they called that town because that word is just an anathema to me. Starts with an N, ends with an R, and should be stricken from our vocabulary. So they chose not to go to a church in that side of the town, but came to our church. And my dad welcomed them. And he stood at the back of the church after the services were over and dared people to be nasty to this family because they were only coming to worship God. That's it. Later, when the Durr family left on another assignment with the Army, um, George Durr Sr., was an army recruiter, they were replaced by another family who was Asian and American. The American serviceman had served in Vietnam and he had married an Asian woman and that too was not allowed in Marion, Illinois. And dad again found himself at the back of the church daring people to say nasty things. One of the things I learned from my father was just to be kind to people, to show love, to show a sense of humanity to who we are. Because why? The Apostle Paul nails it. He says, you are rooted and you are grounded in love. He doesn't say part of you. He doesn't say half of you. He doesn't say a select few of you. He says, you are rooted and grounded in love. You are the kingdom of God. An amazing thing happens when we know that we are loved, correct? If you go up to a kid and you tell them all the time how bad they are, they're going to believe it one of these days and they're going to do terrible things because growing up, the lesson they heard was that they were bad. Every kid messes up. But if a child knows that they are loved and cared for, they can do great things and they turn into productive, loving adults. But it takes a word of grace. How many of you remember a woman who dared to go on the stage of British, Britain's Got Talent? And she strode on the stage and she had her hips like this, and you could tell she was scared silly, but she walked on the stage, and her name was Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle, when she came into this world, came in and was deprived of oxygen, and she was the person in town that just about everybody made fun of, except that she had a beautiful voice. So as she grew older, she would sing for drinks at the local pub. Got drunk a lot because she had a beautiful voice. And every time she sang a beautiful song, they would give her drinks. Well, her mother loved her so much, even despite of her slowness and her disability, that she encouraged her to appear on Britain's Got Talent. Oh my. Susan's mother died three months before she made that appearance. And Susan said she nearly lost her nerve because she wasn't sure that she could do it. But in her heart of hearts, she knew that she was loved and that someone from heaven was cheering her on. So if you remember, she strode on that stage and the first person to kind of make fun of her was Piers Morgan. The second person was a woman named Amanda, and then she came to Simon Cowell, who just was rolling his eyes like you wouldn't believe. And then she began to sing. And it's like the angels came out. The sun came out. People who were nasty and mean began to clap enthusiastically. And she 
walked off that stage with pride. She could not have done that. So what did I do this time, Todd? of a world that's destructive, you look for love. 